You fracture the ground and the gas comes up in all sorts of random places. You can't collect it all. Some of it gets into the aquifers and you can arguably set fire to your tap water. Uh, some of it gets out into the atmosphere and adds to all the unpleasant things that we're putting up there. Um, it's bad enough drilling in a controlled manner. This is a very uncontrolled manner and it's not the way we need to be going. So we're here in solidarity with local people to protest about the fracking site. So fracking is something which um, has proven in America to be extremely um, contaminating to the land and to the water. It's caused extreme health problems to local people, um, to the land, to the animals, to the air as well. It's basically extremely, extremely toxic and shouldn't be legal. So we're here to protest about the, uh, the, fra the fracking industry and we're going to try and sort of we're supporting the campaign locally to shut down or try and stop this particular fracking drink. Now! What do we want? Now! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Now! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Now! When do we want it? Now! The reason why Banks is called Banks is because we've got a water defence system which has been in place for nearly 200 years. So the time there you can see the bank yeah. the tide comes in and on a high tide it laps over the edge on a very high tide that's either in spring or in autumn now if all these rigs start fracking and they pump water into the bedrock uh, in a hydraulic way as the bedrock cracks and what, it, what has been seen to happen over in the file is that there's been small earthquakes now if we were to uh, effect a small earthquake just out to sea and it coincided just at the same time as, um, as a high tide it could, make, it could make a 10 foot swell or a 10 foot wave in other words a miniature tsunami we would be up to our wellingtons it would be over our wellies the whole of this area could easily be flooded now all the people with the carpets in the houses and all the things that are on the floor would be ruined. We don't care about your local communities very much, and we certainly don't care about your bloody cabbages. Our profits are far more important. Besides, we did bottled water anyway. So you're wasting your time here because the government's on our side. We just want to make lots of money, and you should too. Support our initiative. The point is, if you approach your um, insurance broker and ask them, uh, am I covered against a flood? They won't be covered because they'll say it's an act of God. Well, it's not an act of God, it's an act of Godzilla. What do you want? And now, in the name of profit, we're going to spill some nice fresh water all over these lovely cabbages. <laughs> Oh, come on, come on. Lots of money for us. Private industry. Oh, local community. Nah, not bothered, mate. I've got to take a lighted match near that man. Yeah, I remember a reef, which is 
rebuilt airstream into fracking. This is the whole area around here. Uh, we only formed three weeks ago, so we're only just getting started, really, not uh, took off proper yet. Um, we've had a lot of support from Camp Frac. Uh, they've helped us quite a lot in the research. Frac off have helped us a lot in the research as well. I've done quite a lot of research myself um, into the impacts that we're going to have to move as we walk. <laughs> into the, um, the impacts of fracking, especially across the water in America, mm -hmm. um, what's been going on there. And to be honest, it's really scary. And I just think nobody around here has any clue about it. Very few local residents have been made aware of the issue. It just appeared without any consultation, no local consultation whatsoever. So we're just trying to raise the local awareness of it, just let people know what's actually happening in the local area. Because in a growing industry, somewhere so susceptible to pollution issues, I think something which is so dangerous really because it's just unregulated and nobody really knows that much about it and plus the companies themselves have been so close to that we don't really know what could happen. We're here because we're campaigning against climate change and we're very concerned about the direction the country is taking in terms of realistic plans to move away from fossil fuels, um, to actually have a plan to prevent the catastrophic destabilization of global climate. Uh, and here we are desperately scrabbling around for, for more fossil fuels with a process that in America has left a trail of destruction basically. Well, I mean, first of all, I want to bring my support to local residents. Uh, not far from my house, there is plan as well for fracking, so you know, hopefully they will come and support us at this stage. Um, it's to raise public interest to what's happening, uh, you know, in different places of the country, and people are not aware of fracking, and you know, those types of demonstrations can actually raise awareness. And on the longer term, you know, I hope that we can uh, impose a ban on this type of uh, gas extraction, and we're going to lobby our MPs and you know, do what we can in the campaign to uh, to achieve that. Um, overall, we're pretty much aiming to stop fracking. We want to call moratorium in the UK, but. In the end, our basic aim is to stop it completely in the UK because it's not a green alternative whatsoever, and that's the picture that's been painted by a lot of people that it's an alternative to fossil fuels and it's somehow better, and it's really not when it comes down to it. Contamination of water, air pollution, exploding basements, well blowouts, all sorts of things like that. And compared to other kinds of fossil fuels, you just need a lot of wells. A lot of infrastructure, a lot of water, for the amount of fossil fuel you get out multiplies all the risks of pollution. And we're doing this when we should be cutting down. We do have an energy supply problem. It's called peak oil. It's uh, equally important as the main environmental um, movement. And we need to be addressing this sort of thing. Very few politicians are. Very few, few people realise the fragile existence that we have. You can call you can call into a petrol station and fill up your car and buy a bottle of water. And the water is actually um, more expensive than the petrol that you put into your car. If you think about the energy in a litre of petrol, it's a huge amount of energy, and we are squandering it uh, very much in this country, all around the world. But we need to be recognising that um, cheap fuel, easy fuel, oil and gas, petrol is in relatively short supply and worldwide we need to be addressing what comes next and uh, taking this kind of oil out of the ground with all the environmental problems that it has isn't really the answer. <laughs> be a really motivate feels like it's been a really motivating and emboldening experience for the local people here and also as a um, beginning of a national anti-fracking movement so that's what I think today has been about really as well as sending a signal to the fracking industry that we're not gonna take it lying down. In terms of climate change it's a, it's a very difficult thing to understand it's completely unprecedented there's no experience you know, it, we don't have any experience individually or as a community or as a nation. It's totally, so it's a very difficult thing for people to get their heads around. What, what ought to happen is the people, you know, at the top of society who are most informed or, or, or you know, like in the media and government and stuff to lead, to lead the way, but that's not happening at all um, the way it should. So, um, you know, so that's a big problem. So we have a huge, we have a huge battle on our hands because we know it's going to catch up with us sooner or later, but it's just a matter of 
It's a race. A race against time. People, people got the power. People got the power. I had a friend. Uh, yeah. I'm talking to a friend of the language. Yeah. 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 Yeah.